A few years ago, as wokeness spread its deadening claws around the neck of UK comedy, with comedians forced to sign restrictive behaviour agreement forms and social media pylons getting comedians cancelled for joking about controversial topics, a new comedy night called Comedy Unleashed was set up to give comedians a safe space to offend, where they're encouraged not to self-censor and just focus on being funny. Remember when comedy was about that? For some reason, this free speech comedy night was seen as far-right extremism by the exact same people who tried to get comedians banned because of course Hitler was famously very keen on free speech and comedy and the National Front actually started out as a comedy night that just got out of hand. Comedy Unleashed has now announced a UK tour which you'd think would make comedians happy. I mean it's more work for them. Well not all comedians are happy. Andrew O'Neill, not to be confused with the broadcaster, Andrew Neill by the way, totally different person. Well, Andrew O'Neill who used to be transgender or transvestite but is now non-binary apparently or whatever. Man it's too complicated, I don't care, why are you trying to choose your own pronouns, they're not even used when you're there, so why do you care, it's like trying to pick your own nickname, oh from now on my nickname will be Mr Clever, no it won't, it's going to be Billy Shitfingers, because it's been Billy Shitfingers since you used the school toilet when it had no toilet roll in it and got shit in your fingers, anyway, anyway, they then, whatever, tweeted that if you do that tour, you're a f***ing scab, if you do anything on that channel, he means GB News, you're a Scab, that's the line I'm drawing. Comedians need to pick a side. I'm an anarchist. An anarchist? The definition for anarchist has changed slightly since I remember it. Andrew has a show on BBC Radio 4, that's the British state broadcaster. According to Wikipedia, anarchists are sceptical of authority and seek to abolish the institutions they claim maintain unnecessary coercion and hierarchy. Andrew works for a state propagandist broadcaster and threatens colleagues who don't do what he says and question his authority. Sorry, th their authority. You must use the correct pronouns or straight to gulag for you. Anyway, let's have a look at Andrew's comedy to see what we're missing by not having they them on the tour. So, clap your hands! Run rabbit, run rabbit, run, run, run. Here comes the farmer with his gun, gun, gun. Bang, 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 I've been vegan for 21 years. <laughs> that genuinely isn't me in a frock doing a piss take of a lefty comedian, by the way. This is why we need a diversity of voices in comedy nights in comedy. For some people, that's the funniest thing in the world, but I just don't get it. Andrew also attacked comedian Darius Davies, who's brilliant and is on the Comedy Unleashed tour. And Darius asked Andrew how he would afford to feed his child if he boycotted the tour. Andrew replied with, if you can't afford to have kids, you shouldn't have them. Mate, that's a Tory policy. It's amazing how quickly these woke lefty anarchist types reveal their true right wing tendencies. Man, I like this guy now. I want, I want Andrew O'Neill for next leader of the Tory party. Maybe, maybe alongside Pretty Patel. All the arguments against Comedy Unleashed are mental. Some people say that having a night called Comedy Unleashed is just marketing. I mean, oh, heaven forbid that a comedy night should try and market itself and sell some tickets. Such evil. Other people say that Comedy Unleashed damages other comedy nights by suggesting that they're leashed. This is nonsense. Plenty of comedy nights say that they're the best comedy nights with rising stars. They're not implying that other comedy nights that don't say that are worse and have fading has-beens. Also, other nights do restrict free speech and cancel comedians. I was booked on some comedy night in North London and when the woke venue manager got wind that I was on, he pulled the whole night, punishing everyone else on the bill for merely associating with me and sending a message that if you book Leo Kearse or work with them, you could be in trouble too. Funny thing is, it was just an unpaid new material night. I just wanted to do it to have a beer with my mates. Anyway, back to Andrew O'Neill and they them's terrible takes. He said, 
I'm thinking of starting a comedy tour for comedians whose political views are not shared by half the politicians in Parliament. That's pretty much every comedian on the circuit. There are only about three openly right-wing comedians on the UK circuit right now and they've all been cancelled to a certain extent. Nick Dixon has had to stop doing comedy completely. That's why we need a night where alternative opinions are allowed. Comedians say, oh, but you can say what you want at any comedy night, which is true to a certain extent. But Comedy Unleashed was where I first felt able to do some of the material that I do in other clubs. Once it worked at Comedy Unleashed, I felt confident performing it in other places. Other comedians got stuck in. Martin Moore went public and said, why am I on this poster? I am not booked to perform on this tour. Which was similar to my response when I saw him on the poster, to be honest. He's a lovely guy, a great comedian and a circuit stalwart, but a strange choice for a comedy show where you can push back boundaries. But this booking error was picked up by critics as evidence that nobody on the poster was actually performing, which is clearly bollocks. It was just one booking mistake. Comedian Amy Mason said, if your comedy career is going so badly you need to share a bill with a man dressed as Hitler, maybe just like stop comedy, get a job in Halfords or something. I worked in retail for years and it was fine. She's talking about Frank Sinatra, who's a legend of the London cabaret scene. He does lounge songs as part of the Iraq pack alongside Dean Stalin, Saddami Davis Jr. and Osama Bing Crosby. And he's hilarious. I've been a poet, a painter, lover, dictator, Trevor Braun. I was king! I've been up, down, servo and kraut, and I know one thing. Each time I find myself Get up and don't fight the fuck on my face Pick myself up and start An Aryan race Third Reich Third Reich I can't deny it Many times I've took the Jews out Maybe put them on a diet <laughs> But if Berlin smoke can come this here July what am I going to do? I'm getting on that Zeppelin, then I'll fly. This may come as a shock to Amy, but he doesn't dress up as Hitler to celebrate fascism. Just like Mel Brooks, Aloha Low, and Prince Harry when he was fun to be around, he dressed up as Hitler to mock Hitler. Tony Cowards is a comedian who says he stopped doing comedy because of mental health issues. Presumably because anyone who books him is mental. He's been laying into Comedy Unleashed for years and has it in his head that it's a right-wing night funded by Breitbart and Spiked. Like most of the criticism of Comedy Unleashed, it's against an idea of what it is that exists only in people's imaginations. Comedy Unleashed isn't even right-wing. It's run by Andrew Doyle, who's left-wing, and if they only book right-wing comics, they run out of acts before the first interval. And some comedians tried to insinuate that there are comedians on the tour who are sex pests. This calling out of comedians as sex pests has been going on for a while, but really picked up during lockdown when, with our industry in tatters, the comedy community really pulled together to accuse each other of sexual assault. Lists of men suspected of sexual wrongdoing circulated, often for completely bogus reasons, just to settle scores with ex-boyfriends or because some insane open mic comedian had too much time on their hands. To give an indication of the objective validity of the lists, one of the lists circulated featured an act who didn't actually exist and was written in Comic Sans. I know we're comedians, but seriously, who does a pair of list in Comic Sans? Anyway, I approached a comedian directly who'd insinuated the Comedy Unleashed tour had some dodgy men because I knew he didn't have a clean browsing history himself and he admitted openly to sending drunk saucy messages to a woman. Well, 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 so many times these leftist guys who scream the loudest and point the finger the most about this kind of thing turn out to be the ones doing it the most themselves. Regular punters got stuck in as well. Sir Tony G, I mean they hand out knighthoods to anyone these days. Well, he said he'd seen the support act of Reginald D. Hunter, who's on the tour, tell racist jokes about Scots. Oh, won't someone please think of the Scots? Man, not even Reg himself, but his support act is accused of saying this, presumably making Reg racist adjacent. So that's a white man calling a black man racist for being near a person who told jokes about Scottish people. Someone else said, when something chooses to self-describe as free thinking, especially comedy of all things, you just know it means free to think bad thoughts. You wouldn't have to boast about how free thinking you were if your thoughts were worth thinking. 
Oh yeah, because if a chicken is described as free range, you just know it means it's free to range to bad places such as a Nazi rally. That's why they're free range. Their arguments are self-defeating. They say comedians already have free speech while trying to stop them performing and shut this night down. This tweet from Josh Howey, who's a very funny left-wing comedian, shows this. I've just been blocked by a woke leftist comedy booker who's attacking the Comedy Unleashed tour for politely challenging his statement that woke leftist comedy bookers don't exist. By attacking the tour, they're showing how necessary it is. Anyway, all this fuss from our self-appointed moral guardians is just free publicity for the show. They're like the religious conservative blue-haired old women who stood outside cinemas in the 80s protesting against French films that included scenes of naked lesbianism, thereby alerting every red-blooded male in the vicinity that this boring-looking foreign film actually contained naked lesbianism and was worth watching. All these mediocre comedians and lefty wet wipes bleating about Comedy Unleashed are just helping shift tickets, for which I thank them. Tickets for the Comedy Unleashed tour are now on sale, and if you're at the Edinburgh Fringe, you can catch me this weekend on Sunday the 7th on Trigonometry Live, and I'm also going to be on the ultimate free speech show, Hating Live, every night from uh, the 6th to the, to the 8th. Uh, it's an amazing show. Basically, the audience writes down what they hate, it goes into a bucket, we pull it out, and then the comedians have to say why they hate that thing, no matter what it is. Also, Darius Davies is doing a show uh, called The Non-Disclosure Agreement. Please go and watch that show if you're in Edinburgh. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's about how uh, somebody stole one of his routines, and he called them out for stealing it, and then that person tried to sue him. If you like this video, please share it with your therapist, and if you'd like to support me making these videos, you can become a Patreon from as little as £3 a month, which is the price of free speech these days. You can get early access to these videos and a Patreon-only podcast with a criminal barrister. And my next videos are going to be about another threat to comedy. A comedy club in Malaysia that I used to perform at has been, has been closed down by Islamists, so I'm going to do a video about that. Thanks for listening. I'll be Luke Harris. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Here's what I've learned in 21 years of a plant-based diet. I only want one thing of celery, but they won't sell me only one thing of celery. They will only sell me between six and eight. <laughs> Fins of celery! Which means that I then have to take between six and eight fins of celery home. Use one and then watch as over the course of a week between five and seven <laughs> fins of celery with that and die. Thus reminding me inevitably of my own mortality. <laughs> if anyone is interested in joining a collective, 